Father God, just uh, speak to us through your word this morning. Father, open our hearts to hear, uh, open our mindsets to stay focused, Father, and uh, hear what the Spirit has to say to us this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's a call on each and every one of your lives in this room. And Jesus Christ is calling you to himself. He's calling you to fellowship with him. Hallelujah. He's calling you to, to not just be a member of a church, but he's calling you to be a disciple of his. He's calling you to be uh, in the inner circle of his fellowship. That's why the Holy Spirit came down at Pentecost, yeah, so that he could dwell with all of us at once. Hallelujah. Do you get the magnitude of that? That God wants to dwell with his people. And the only way he could do it is to pour out his spirit on all people. Uh, we need to understand that. Yes, we don't need another Pentecost, but we need a revelation of the first Pentecost. We need that, that Pentecost putting in perspective. Amen? Amen. Uh, and, and when God dwells with his people, that means we become more like God. If we let him, if we follow him, if, we, if we're willing to enter in. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so here, really, the, the entire Gospels are, are, are about the life of Jesus, but they're also about him calling his disciples into intimacy with him. Amen. 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 So God is calling you this morning into intimacy through Pentecost with him. The same spirit has been poured out at Pentecost, has not left. Because the church is still here. Amen? Amen. Uh, we, we need to stop looking at the escape plan, the rapture of the church. Uh, because I don't believe it's going to happen like we, we've been told. Because I think there's a lot of false teachers in the church. Yeah. And we need to stop thinking escape and start thinking service. Yeah, the, the church is looking for anointed people. Oh, this, this guy's anointed, that guy's anointed. Uh, can I say God's looking for faithful people? Yes. Uh, you know, anointed people. Uh, I see anointed people, they end up being fallen people. But faithful people are always anointed. Amen. If you want to be anointed, you get faithful. It's as simple as that. <laughs> If you, if you want to not fall in your anointing, you get faithful. If you want to lord it around with your anointing thinking you're something special, your anointing will let you down because it will bring pride. You see, Lucifer was anointed, but he wasn't faithful. And he got kicked out of heaven. And if Lucifer, the chief worshipping cherub <laughs> that he was... Can fall, so can you. So stop looking for teachers that are anointed and start looking for men and women who are faithful. It doesn't impress me running from church to church. What impresses me is being faithful to where God's called you. Yes. I'm going to be faithful to what God's called me to do. And it's going to cost me dearly. It is costing me more than any of you know. I don't want false prophets walking in here telling me they're going to be my best friend when they're false prophets. And they're liars and they're adulterers. That's why they can't stay here. Because I see what they are. Because God reveals it to me. And so they run. 
God's looking for faithful people, not Jezebels that whisper in your ear and puff you up. And Nathaniel was under the fig tree. What did Adam and Eve do? They covered themselves with fig tree leaves. Because they were ashamed. Because they thought they were going to be like God. And they already was. But when they realised they'd lost God's glory. They'd lost God's covering. They tried to cover up their sin with fig leaves. And so it isn't just a matter of Jesus saying, I saw you under a fig tree. What Jesus was saying is, I saw you, Nathaniel, trying to cover your sin. And I saw how righteous you were and how you didn't have any deceit in your life. You were trying to get right with God the best way you could. And Adam and Eve tried to get right with God the best way they could. By covering. But you see, Jesus came to that fig tree and he cursed that fig tree because it's no longer fig trees that are going to cover us, it's Christ himself. You need to stop mixing it up and covering it up because when God shows up, he's going to unveil you. And that's what happened to Nathaniel on that day. He was unveiled before God because when God shows up in your life, there's nothing hidden anymore. There's no cover up anymore. The law won't even protect you anymore because you're fully exposed by the law giver who's more powerful than the law. Amen? Amen. And so you have to understand, you have to understand that Nathaniel here was saying, I'm keeping the law. I'm keeping right with God. I'm doing the best I can. And Philip the evangelist, the evangelist's heart is, is, is being expressed to, to people. The love of God is expressed in the evangelist, or it should be. Unfortunately, most times and most evangelists are just telling people they're going to hell. <laughs> but the love of an evangelist should be to come and meet Jesus. Come and meet the Messiah. Come and meet the Holy One of Israel. Come and meet a man who's changed my life. That's the evangelist. I don't see many evangelists in the church because I see very few people who've met Jesus. I see people who've met religion. I've seen people who've met uh, service. And the best they're doing is, is, is covering themselves with fig trees. And saying, I'm under... A spiritual covering. <laughs> There's only one spiritual covering you need, and that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 Any other spiritual covering is a false hope. <laughs> yeah. Fig leaves, fig trees, they wither at the root and they burn up because they can't cover you. Oh, you're getting this message this morning. That if you're a bit with Jesus Christ, the natural thing is to say to somebody, Come and meet what I found! And all I see is a dry, dead church that's all found fig leaves. It's found something to make them comfortable. It's found something, found something that where they can walk in their sin but give an appearance of being clothed in righteousness but they're not right. Hear me on this. You can sit under any teaching you want. Nathaniel was sitting under the law. He was sitting under that teaching. He was sitting under that covering. But you've got to get into him. You've got to get into him. You've got to get into Christ. It's not just about being covered by somebody. It's being in and one with them. Uh, and until you encounter Jesus, you're not one. You see, the outer courts is where the world is. Uh, uh, and where the blood sports is. Where there's the buying and the selling of the good things of God and the bad things of the world. 
and, and where there's the entertainment going on, and where there's, there's people with fig leaves. Look how holy I am. That's the church of today. The, out, the church of today is it at best in the outer courts, where we're doing all the worship. Where, where we're blowing the trumpets, where we're sacrificing, where, where, where we're sat buying and selling the gospel on the next book stand. And we're in the outer court, and we've never ever entered into the holiness of God. We never ever experienced God for ourselves. But when Jesus draws near, you have to be compelled to come. And that's the work of the evangelist. He compels people to experience Jesus for themselves. But you see, most people haven't experienced Jesus. So they're rubbish evangelists. At best, they can talk about the experience. But they've never experienced. That's why we're not seeing... England said, because the evangelists we've got think they're great. And the fact is they've not met Jesus properly. Or if they did, their testimony was I got saved back in 19 whatever. And since then I'm, I'm doing this great thing for Christ. I'm, I'm standing on the soapbox, I'm knocking on doors, I'm tracking this and I'm tracking that. And they... they <laughs> All oh God wants you is in his presence. Yeah. Because when you're in his presence, right. the natural thing is they come into what I've, I've experienced. Mm. But you see, we're not telling people to come into what we've experienced. We're telling people to come into religion. It's the, we're telling people to get covered with the fig trees of knowledge. <laughs> you know what the tree of good and knowledge was? Good and evil? The fig tree. It wasn't an apple, it was a fig. I'm convinced it was. The Bible talks too much about the fig trees for it to be a coincidence. Mm. Have you figured it out? Yeah. yeah. Mm. What you eat of becomes yeah. part of you. That's right. And so we're eating and consuming rubbish, rubbish teaching. False doctrine, evil thoughts of the world, and we're consuming it, and we're receiving it, and we're watching it, and we're reading it, and we're hearing it, and we're saying, Oh, it's great, you know, this concert's in town, this preacher's in town. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> this Jesus is in me, and I want him and him alone. Not me. Not my flesh, not my spirit, but his spirit alone. And I want to be one with. And so you have to get somebody who's on fire to say, come and experience God. And so that's what Philip is, the Philip the evangelist. Philip, <laughs> who just was so set ablaze, he, he, he got free travel. He got upgrades all the time. One minute he's here, next minute he's over there. Oh, that's, that's first class. No waiting lounges. Just instant boom, boom. If you want to be on fire for Jesus, you're going to expect a few boom, booms in your life. Yeah. And so he goes <laughs> and he, he, he finds Nathaniel and he says to him, We've found him! Oh, that's passion. That's passion. That, that's somebody who's been looking for God. And you're here because you're looking for God, praise God. Mm. And you're going to find him. You're going to find him because you, you, your heart in you knows there's more. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just as I'm speaking, your heart in you says, give me more of Jesus. Give me, give me more of that fire. Mm. Give me more of, of what God is. Okay. Because I'm not content with the little I have. And so, <laughs> he says, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote. And he's Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, hallelujah, there's no better name. There's no better name to declare than Jesus to, to a world that's trying to get right with God. But you see, most people are being taught they are God. 
<laughs> you can't get right with yourself. I've tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> he does have a right argument. <laughs> and so he turns around and he's, you can tell he's religious. Oh, he, he, you can tell he's in a non-spirit-filled denomination. Because he turns around and says, Really? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can anything good come from Encounter Church crew? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jesus Junior. <laughs> um, you know, we, we have to understand <laughs> life and death come out of our mouth. So you say, that Pastor Phil, well, he, he thinks he's on fire. He didn't float my boat. I'm not here to float your boat. I'm not here to perform for you. I ain't here to perform for you. I'm here to serve him. Amen. And so, the religious attitude always says, that ain't God. That's, that's, that encounter... Is, is not of God. <laughs> what, what, what they're teaching at Encounter, well, I'll stay well clear of that, because, well, let's face it, here you're safe, over there, who knows what could happen? <laughs> <laughs> and so anybody who speaks out of a religious heart speaks out of a critical heart. And they never speak out of love. I, I, I know because I, I was Nathaniel once. I was sitting under my fig trees. I, I, I was sheltering myself from the blazing sun, thinking I was right with him. Uh, and I, I was counting my blessings, thinking everybody else didn't have any blessings, they had it all false. You know what? Somebody said, Come and encounter Jesus for yourself. And I said, uh, I thought I got him. Thought I'd experienced all there was, all I needed. But deep down in my heart, I knew I wasn't right with him. Yes, I, I got saved at nine. Yes, I, I believe I got filled with the Spirit at nine. But I didn't have anybody to teach me that I was right with God. I, I had to perform to please him. No, what a rubbish. I, 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 I was building a false tabernacle for me and my God to dwell in. But my God, my real God, was building a tabernacle for me to dwell with him. But I was building a tabernacle for him, my version of God, to dwell with me. See, when I have a spiritual covering, that's not Jesus Christ. We're building ourselves a prayer shawl. We're building ourselves a tabernacle. We're, we're building ourselves a, a spiritual covering that isn't big enough to contain the real Jesus. And so Nathaniel was willing. You see, because the, the true gospel compels even the most religious, righteous. No, Jesus said there's no guile in you there's no deceit in you you're, you're a man with pure intents and pure thoughts uh, you know, you, you're not trying to cover up you're, you're trying to do the right thing he wasn't a false teacher he was trying to do the right thing that he'd been taught you know, hello that's why the church is, is in a state because it's trying to do the right thing but all they're doing is what they've been taught by bad people or people that didn't understand the Spirit of God. Not necessarily bad people. But the, the lack of understanding. My people perish because of the lack of knowledge. And a lack of vision. Amen? Mm -hmm. And a lack of teaching. And I'll add to the Word of God. The lack of teaching people are perishing for. Or should I say, a lack of right teaching. A lack of righteous teaching. Because we are never, ever going to be righteous outside of Jesus Christ. Ever. 
Do I get an amen on that other than Mary? Come on, folks. You, you don't come into, come into the presence of God the Father by your own righteousness. You come in by him and his holiness. And we are being transformed to be like him. Hallelujah. He's doing it. Because if it was left to us, the best we would have is fig leaves. Yeah. And so, Jesus got to the heart of the matter and he pointed this out. He, he said, Behold an Israelite. Behold a person of God. Behold somebody who's no deceit in. And Nathaniel's first response is, How do you know me? There's a little bit of pride going on there. But at first glance. Oh, you know how spiritual I am. You know how, how right I am. That's not what Jesus was saying. He said more than that. Because his gaze looked at him. And he looked down into his deepest soul. And he told him who he was. And the rest of the world haven't recognized it. You see, when you encounter Jesus, Jesus is going, to, is going to reveal to you who you are. Not who you are in yourself, but who you are in him. You see, when you, when, when you encounter Jesus, he's going to say, <laughs> you know what, Barry, there's no sin in you. Elaine, there's no sin in you. Because I've dealt with it. I've taken it. <laughs> I'll get a hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Nathan said, How do you know me? And Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, he said, I saw you back in the garden under fig leaves. I saw you when you tried to get right with God and cover up what was exposed in your life. I saw you. And you know what? God sees you too. Your Pentecost is a two-way thing. It's not about God just showing up. It's about you being revealed to God, the real you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nothing, in, and hid, nothing hidden. God saw you in Adam. And great great grandpa. <laughs> he saw you in Eve. You know, we get so hung up on ourselves. Uh, <laughs> Eve came out of Adam. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's on Facebook I saw that just yesterday or today somebody put a post up Eve was prime rib. <laughs> Not belly pork, prime rib. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> that means you're one with your wife, you're in it together. So when she sinned and bit of that fruit, have you figured it out yet? When she bit into that, it was as good as Adam doing it. And so Adam said, you know, I'm in it anyway. But you see, all through the Bible, God says many things about women. And women and men get caught up on it because of the lack of understanding. You see, Paul writes... I forbid women to speak in the church. Revelation, Jesus says, get that Jezebel out, for she's causing fornication, causing adultery in the church. So, can I say that is the word of God? So men say women can't teach. 
Well, it, it, it's a sin of a woman teaches a man. But can I say to you, Eve was in Adam. She's the flesh, symbolically. Mm -hmm. The flesh are forbidden to teach in the church of God. Jesus calls us sons of God. Doesn't call us daughters, although we do that to make women feel happier. He calls us sons. Because even Eve was in Adam. Yeah. So, I'm not forbidding women to preach. I'm forbidding the flesh to preach. Because the flesh will always take first bite. The flesh always appeals to the natural. And that's what's wrong. There's too many women preaching in the church. Or should I say, there's too much flesh being preached in the church. There's too much prime rib. Looks good to taste. But just makes you fat. You see, <laughs> as soon as... <clears throat> what's his name? The strongest man I've ever lived. As soon as Samson, the anointed Samson, he was not faithful, but he was anointed. As soon as he put his lap, head in the lap of Delilah, yeah. he lost his vision. As soon as we put our mindsets into the lap of feeding the flesh and the sensual, we will lose our vision for God. As soon as we turn on the pornography and we lust, we lose our vision for Jesus. What's holy and what's pure. And so we have to understand what God's saying. He says, you worship me, not in the flesh, but in spirit yeah. and in truth. Amen. He says, no flesh can come into God's presence. So we have to understand the church is the bride of Christ. The female, the woman spotless, pure, holy, legitimate. In other words, joined with Jesus by holy matrimony. They become one, just as Eve came out of Adam, and Jesus is the second Adam. We, Eve, must go back in to Adam. But why the church is outside of Adam pontificating, praising, worshipping at the altars of the bull sacrifices, the outer courts. They need one sacrifice. They need one communion. They need one with Jesus. So the false church is all around us. And people say, oh, there's this false apostle, there's this false prophet, this false... Uh, yeah. There is, because whenever there is the real thing, there's always a counterfeit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, when Jesus saw him, he says, before Philip called you, before you ever heard about me, before you ever heard the gospel, I saw you. There's nothing hidden with Jesus. Hallelujah. He's seeing it all. So why are you trying to be separate from him? Because he's holy and you're not. Why don't you cast aside the burdens of the ugliness and say, Lord, I'm coming into oneness with you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. 
and he says this Rabbi you are the son of God you are the king of Israel when God reveals who you are you can't help but recognize who he is when you when you get dethroned from your mindset you can't help reinstating him as king hallelujah yeah. And Jesus answers back and he says, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, you believe. And he says this, You will see greater things than these. Most assuredly, or the old King James, merrily, verily, I say to you, hereafter, you will see heaven opened and the angels or the messengers of God ascending and descending. You see, we're, 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 we're singing heaven come down. Send your messengers, God, down from heaven. And Jesus is saying, uh -uh. messengers come into heaven, get the revelation from the throne, and they come back with it. We're to ascend into the holy place. We're to ascend into fellowship with God and get the secret things that God has for us and bring them to earth. We are the messengers of God on earth. We are to ascend and press in to where Jesus is. Because we're called to follow Christ. So we are to go into the secret place and say, Lord, speak to me with your mysteries. And let me bring them to earth. To inspire others to also go on a journey of being one with Jesus. We've got it all back to front in the church. Haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. When Jacob's ladder was there, what did he see? He saw angels ascending and descending. Yeah. Not just descending. We, if we want to see God move on earth, we have to go and say, God, where are you? I'm coming where you are. I'm getting into what you're doing. Oh, wow, the war room. <laughs> yeah. and we bring it back to earth yes. come on we need to renew our mindsets we need to have a right understanding and we need to fellowship with God so that we can bring these mysteries to earth amen, amen. amen. oh I'm excited because when you've been in the presence of God he becomes your king he becomes your covering and nothing man can do can take that away from you you know why 120 people changed the world and 2,000 years on we're still here changing the world? Mm -hmm. Because they encountered Jesus for themselves. Mm -hmm. Don't be content with Pastor Phil being on fire. Be content with being on fire yourself, nothing else. You know, the world will throw water on you, say you're sprinkled. <laughs> you, 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 we're we're going to sprinkle you with some water, uh, and, and you're going to enter into the deep things of God. Hear me? Mm -hmm. We're going to sprinkle you with some revelation that you're in the church, and now you can enter into the deep things of God. No, no, no. Jesus said, go into the baptismal waters, go deep under, die to self. Let the old man stay in the pit and you come out new. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> the dove. Two doves were released from the ark. Okay. And one came back with an olive. Peace offering. Peace on earth. Jesus went into the water, into the flood waters, came up out of the water, and the Holy Spirit came like a dove, but this time that dove found a resting place, a new ark, a new rock. Hallelujah. 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 If you're not anchored into the rock, if you're not identified with Christ, if you're not died to self and risen with him, you're not in it. And, and, and a dead thing can't speak life into anything else. You have to be resurrected to speak life.